loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the beautiful scenery that you've provided for us to have this fellowship. And Lord, throughout the week, we've heard some very good spiritual messages, Lord. We've had some very good physical food, and it's all to prepare us for the final days. So I ask you, Lord, to speak for me and um, strengthen me, Lord, and help me to have boldness to prepare this, to present this presentation, Lord. And I pray that um, you can prepare the hearts and minds for those to um, understand and absorb the information, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the, uh, the theme scripture for the health message this week is uh, 3 John 1. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Um, and what we, what we discussed was that um, in order for um, things to prosper, the, the health must prosper as well as the soul. And we see that in Corinthians 15.44, there are two entities, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. It is sown in a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. But there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Brother Haran showed from the scriptures that the health message is given by Christ as a lesson book which shows how Christ uses the physical things to demonstrate the physical things. And that the body is a temple and also the church. Hence the blood must be cleansed and purified. Hence the blood must be cleansed and purified for the body to be in good health. So this is what he, sh he showed through his um, presentation that we need to have clean blood um, in order to have uh, a clean body, and that also and that, uh, and that also applies to the church. The church must be cleansed. When did this cleansing take place? 1844. And will this happen again? Yes. Yeah. Brother uh, Marek also showed, showed us in the scriptures that wisdom only comes from God. Joshua 1 8. Uh, the wisdom that comes from God allows us to prosper, but we can only prosper um, when we keep God's law. And in doing so, uh, Joshua 1, uh, 8 says, uh, Thou shalt meditate on the law of God day and night. Day, so I'll start again. Thou shalt meditate on the law of God day and night, day and day, I think that's supposed to be day by day. I copied that direct. Thou shalt meditate on the law of God day by day and night. Observe and do according to all that is written therein, and will make thy way prosperous, and then to have good success. So it, it is it is in keeping, it is implementing the law of God um, that gives us success to glorify God. Hence the, hence the soul prosper, hence the soul that prosper is character building. The spirit of prophecy, Ellen White says, we need to learn the trade of character building. And in order to do this, the 12th and the 13th chapters of 1 Corinthians, Corinthians um, should be committed to memory, written in the mind and heart. She says we need to read these chapters every day. So how do, we accomplish, uh, how do we accomplish character building? Again, we've had, had some wonderful um, um, studies on self-sacrificing love. It is by um, self-sacrificing love that will also help us to uh, develop our characters. And this is what the spirit of prophecy has to say. Let Christ direct. In your work of character building, be sure that Christ is your director. It, may, it makes a great difference whether you are laborers together with God or whether you are laborers together 
or whether you are labors together with God or whether you are labors together against God. Whether it is your highest ambition to magnify God or to magnify yourself and your plans, Christ declares, without me, ye can do nothing. Nothing that will be approved by God. Study your motive carefully and make sure that you are not working in your own wisdom apart from Christ. And that's um, 6 Bible Commentary, 1087.2. We, we need to seek for perfection. God desires us to reach the standard of perfection made possible for us by the gift of Christ. He calls upon us to make our choice on the right side, to connect with heavenly angels, to adopt principles that will restore us to the divine image. In his written word and in the great book of nature, he has revealed the principles of life. It is our work to obtain a knowledge of these principles and by obedience to cooperate with him in restoring health to the body as well as to the soul. And that's Councils to Diet, CD 16.1. So we see, um, in order to prosper, we need to be in good health um, both in, in soul, and the soul is the character building. So then what is good health? In order to have good health, we must have good blood. For the blood is the current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body. When supplied with proper food, when, when supplied with proper food elements, and when cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The more perfect the circulation, the better this will work, the better this work will be accomplished. And that's from Ministry of Healing and also Councils to Diet. Um, how do we purify the blood? What do we need to do to make sure our blood is pure? And it's all, and also nourishing, we need to also nourish the system, so we need to eat. eat. Sorry? New start, correct. Um, so in order to um, get the blood in a pure state, we have to reform our diet. Um, so this is only a summary, There's only, I'm not going to go into to in-depth information about this um, because a lot of you are already aware of this. But we'll just give you some um, examples from the spirit of prophecy as to what she said that we need to do to um, reform our diet. And what she says is, let the diet reform be progressive. Let the people be taught how to prepare food without the use of milk or butter. I mean, even in present truth, there are still people that are using butter and milk and don't realise it because it's hidden in, in, um, in processed food. So we really need to be aware of this. But anyway, tell them that the time will soon come when there will be no safety in using eggs, milk, cream or butter because disease in animals is increasing in in proportion to the disease of wickedness amongst men. The time is near when because of the iniquity of the fallen race, the whole animal creation will groan under the diseases that curses the earth. When did that time come? Has that time arrived now? Yes. How do we know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and interestingly, as the prophecies that we've discussed on these charts, um, the history of those prophecies started to repeat. When did the prophecies start to repeat? 1989. And what paralleled that in 1989 was the the outcry with the egg condition. Remember the egg, scare. the egg scare, the salmonella in eggs, yeah. and we had the, the politician Edwina Curry um, uh, 
on national telly um, saying that it was it was no longer safe to eat eggs and so on. It was a quite a big a, a, a big media outburst. And so that was in 1989. And interestingly, at the time we had the communism, the falling of communism, and hence that parallels 18, uh, 1988, 18, 18, 1844. Um, 18, sorry, that parallels 1798. Um, and then again, in 2001, we had the outcry with the foot and mouth diseases, all the and the mad cow diseases, we had all the farms around the country burning all the um, burning all the, the, the animals, and uh, there was a big media outcry about the safety of eating beef and so on. So it was at that time that God's people really should have woken up to the fact that if they were eating meat, if they were consuming um, any sort of animal product, it was at that time that we should have, that we should stop doing that and start looking to how to reform our diet. Um, she then goes and says, God will have his people, God will give his people ability and tact to prepare wholesome food without these things. Let our people discard all unwholesome recipes. Let them learn how to live healthily, teaching to others what they have learned. Let them impart this knowledge as they would Bible instruction. So it's so crucial that we need to be eating simple foods, as well as drinking the spiritual food. Uh, let them teach the people to preserve the health and increase the strength by avoiding large amounts of cooking that, is, that has filled the world with chronic invalids. By precept and example, make it plain that the food which God gave Adam in his sinless state is the best for man's use as, as he seeks to regain that sinless state. So what did God give us in the beginning? What was the original diet? Genesis? One. Genesis 1, 2. I didn't put that up. But if we go to, if we can turn to Genesis, I don't know. 129. Can somebody read that for me? Every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the in the which is the fruit of the tree, yielded seed to you and shall be shall be Okay. I've just wanted to. Thank you. So God has given us our natural fruit. He's given our, our natural fruits. He's given us our natural foods, and that is grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. And this is what the spirit of prophecy says. Proper diet. Know what is best. Choose the best foods. In order to know what are the best foods, we must study God's original plan for man's diet. He who created man and who understands his needs appointed Adam his food. Grains, fruits, nuts and vegetables constitute a diet chosen for us by our creator. To return to the original diet, God is trying to, God is trying to lead us back step by step to his original dark design that man should subsist upon the natural products of the earth amongst those uh, amongst those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord meat eating will eventually be done away with uh, will be done away flesh will cease to form part of the diet of their diet should of uh, Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. Uh, we should ever keep this view. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavour to work steadily towards it. Um, okay. So we understand then that if God is leading us step by step to the original diet. Um, it means that we should have in our diet a large amount of raw food as possible and, our, and we should be moving towards that step by step because cooked food is very um, quite addictive actually so we, we, we've come from 2001 not eating meat at least we should be now in it's been how many years since 2001 it's quite a while now 
So we should be all vegans by now, and then we should now be transitioning on to eating far less cooked food. But that's a, that's a, that's a progressive step. So greater, greater reforms should be seen amongst the people who claim to be looking for the soon appearing of Christ. Health reform is to do amongst our people a work which it has not yet done. There are those who ought to be awake to the danger of meat eating and who are still eating flesh of animals. That's in, in danger in the physical, mental and spiritual health. Many who are now only half converted on the question of meat eating will go from, will go from God's people to walk no more with meat. Okay, um, so at least we, we know that we shouldn't be eating meat. But we also have an understanding now that we should be eating a lot more raw food and vegetables in the diet. Um, okay, so what did we do on Monday? Before we go to that, what, we, we sprouted, didn't we? We sprouted um, pulses and beans. What did Daniel ate as, as his... As his um, as his um, main meal. He had pulses, didn't he? Should we turn to, to that was Daniel chapter 2? I didn't put that in. Daniel chapter 1. And when you're there, Amen. Can someone read that for me? Daniel purpose to read the Daniel purpose to uh, okay, the Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And then it goes into 12, it says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pounds to eat and water to drink. Yep, okay, stop it. So we had, they had pulses to eat. Now on Monday we sprouted pulses, didn't we? Mm. And uh, so what did we do? What we did, we put, you remember we put a selection of pulses, um, lentils, uh, Lentil, black beans, I'm not sure what happened to the black beans. Um, chickpeas, mung beans, um, which were sprouted. It's quite simple. So you don't have to cook these. They're far more nourishing than um, having them cooked. Uh, so what we did, we put a small amount in the, a glass jar. Let's have a look at the mung beans. They take... Can you smell it? Chickpeas does smell. They smell it, or we won't open it. We won't, we won't open it. So we'll talk about uh, the pros and cons of, of sprouting. So we put a small amount of um, lentils, didn't we? Um, pulses in the glass jar, and then we add water to, to that, and then we soaked it overnight. And then the next day, what did we do? Pour the water on. Yeah, and rinse it. And then what did you do after that? And we come. And we sprouted it, and we got this much in the jar when we put about that much in the. Uh, yeah, okay, so we'll just pass that around. Um, those are lentils, those are sprouted lentils, alright? And they're ready to eat. So there we go, we've got, we've got a meal. Can we mix them together? You can mix them together and you can mix them in salads. Yeah, that's, that's mung beans. If you actually, if you, um, if you leave mung beans to go on for much longer, they turn into bean sprouts. So you can carry on just watering them, washing them in a bigger a glass container and just add in water, throw in water and then do that every day. And then if you leave that for a couple of weeks, it will grow into quite long bean sprouts. So that's mung beans and that's chicks, chickpeas. Alright, so that can form part of your salad today.
Right, so what are the health benefits of um, sprouts? Of sprouts? So, okay. Now, sprout, before we go into the health benefits of sprouts, sprouts, like water in a plant, like any climate, in any climate, if the sprout, if you water the sprouts with very cold water, it takes longer for it to start germinating. And if it's a very cold, we, um, you know, if you're doing it in winter, then you make the water slightly tepid, tepid and then uh, soak it in tepid water and water it in tepid water when you're washing it in tepid water. And then it will sprout much more quickly. Um, we're up here in Scotland, it's not very, it's not very warm, although we're in a central heated uh, room. But um, it should take between two to three days to get the sprout really going. So we had that going just around there somewhere. So we had the sprout ready to eat after three days. Um, so in, but in, in, in summer that's quite easy to do. If you got the sprouts on a cold win windowsill, it could take a week in cold water. So to speed it up, you can um, put that in, uh, sprout them in mild water. Another thing about sprouts, we've had a recent, there's been a recent scare about um, uh, E. coli outbreak affecting sprouts so when you're sprouting that that's food that you have to eat so you make sure that the container that you use are clean I, I um, washed the containers in bleach to make sure that it was you know sterilizing in bleach to make sure it was scrupulously clean and uh, the water obviously it's tap water so you can water it from, with tap water when you're handling food make sure that your hands are clean so that you don't contaminate it but um, there was a recent scare with um, uh, bean sprouts with E. coli. So again, everything is becoming contaminated. But just be, just be aware of that. Yeah. Okay? Is that because of the soil and the water that you're I think um, it was the source was in Germany. And uh, what they found was uh, the, the water source was contaminated. And it was water, they were watering, um, they, they, were, they were making bean sprouts with contaminated water source and it got into the, got into the bean sprouts. So you have, to be, you have to be careful, you just have to be mindful that when you're preparing lentils, you're going to eat them like that. You're not going to cook them any further because cooking helps to destroy bacteria that will cause um, any kind of food poisoning. So just ensure that everything is scrupulously clean, you've got them in a clean environment. Um, throughout the week we had the lids on those and we had them covered so that's no problem. Now sometimes, what, um, I didn't get the original packet, bear with me. Just quickly, these, um, these pulses were just ordinary packs from the supermarket and they sprouted, yeah? Um, they're not organic, they're just ordinary, um, they're just ordinary pulses. So, you know, we have to be mindful that not everyone can afford, um, afford organic products, so you can just go to the supermarket and they're just as good because you're just getting them off the shop. And you should mention that you use just, you know, reused jars, because actually sell the sprouting jars in the um, some health shops and they're quite expensive, oh. so that was quite economical. Egg, um, egg, absolutely. These, um, these jars are reused jars. They, I, I can't remember what, I think there was jam in this one. Oh no, olives was in this one. And um, nut paste were in those. So don't throw away your glass jar. And it's best to sprout in glass. And again, give the glass a good wash in boiling hot water and a little bit of bleach to sterilize them so that you're not gonna contaminate your food. Okay? Um, yeah, now the thing about some of these, Every, all, all pulses and beans are seeds, yeah? Um, mung beans generally sprout, ordinary mung beans generally sprout very well. Organic beans and pulses will sprout 100%. So sometimes you'll get some of these, it doesn't matter how much you water them, it won't sprout. Not to worry about it, it just means it's a bit of a hassle trying to um, take out the beans that are not being sprouted because you bite into it, 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 it 
it's not, it's a bit uncomfortable. So, you know, um, so that's the only difference between having an organic beans and sprouts, uh, beans and sprouts, uh, organic pulses or just ordinary packs from the shop. Is that the organic will sprout 100% whereas some of these may not sprout. Every beans and pulse should sprout. The only sprout, the only um, seed that won't sprout is rice because that's been treated, I believe it's, we, um, it's been irradiated or it's been treated um, or GM. Um, don't be surprised, all rice is, is GM'd in some way, so it's not, no rice is sproutable. Okay, so the, that's, that's the beans, so we'll just finish up. Uh, just quickly then, the nutrients, sprouts are very, very nutritious, far more nutritious than the cook equivalent to um, your lentils. Um, the nutrients increase in their concentrations and proteins by about 20 percent, uh, I'll just go through this quickly, it, uh, by about 20 percent, um, and um, many of the vitamins by as much as 500 percent, so when you sprout them that's as much as, that's how much vitamins and minerals you can get out of sprouted things and pulses. Does anybody take vitamins, vitamin supplements? Well, these are much better than taking, if you, if you do, you can stop taking vitamin supplements now and start sprouting if you're deficient because you'll, you'll get all your available minerals and vitamins from sprouts far easily than what you can get from taking a, a, a pill of vitamin C. But I won't get the supplement vitamin D from it. Sorry? I, I take vitamin D supplements. I won't get it. Well, you can go out to the sunlight and get your vitamin D supplements. Okay, just quickly go for this. Right, so high enzyme, you get high enzyme activity, um, and enzymes are um, a chemical that we need in our body to um, pr process all the chemical reactions. And when you eat cooked food, that is completely destroyed in cooked food, but that is obviously, that is not destroyed in, in, in sprouted food, so you can eat that. Um, quite easily. Um, enzymes are energizing um, and it will give you a lot more energy than if you had cooked food. So um, if you notice when you eat a lot when you eat a lot of cooked food you, you, you feel tired and you want to go to sleep. Whereas if you eat more raw food, especially sprouted food, you won't have that lethargic feeling you actually do feel um, you, you know you do feel um, energized. Right, so it's a it's a potent source of um, Potent source of antioxidants and alkalizing to the body. Time for me, uh, another time, but al alkalizing means is that disease thrives in acidic conditions. If your body, if people are sick or diseased, their body, their blood tends to be acidic. Um, sprouts helps to alkalize the body, so it brings it to a neutral point. Do you know what the neutral point is? Seven. seven. seven the magic number seven. Right, so it's a good source of, of essential fatty acids, which, um, which many diets are lacking, are lacking. It's an excellent source of fiber, rich in chlorophyll. I'm just going to go through these uh, very quickly because the uh, time is going. Uh, it's a good source of vitamins. Uh, as we said, the vitamin density of some seeds can increase from 100 to 200% after several days of sprouting. So just imagine, 2,000% after, two, after several days of sprouting. We don't sprout, we cook that. So we're, we're, we're not even, you know, we're cooking the food, so we're killing it before we, we start it, we, before we, we, we consume it. So eating sprouts, we're eating live food, and we're getting up to 200% um, um, increase in, in vitamins and minerals. It's filled with, a array, with an array of essential minerals, and I'll list, I managed to get off the web the, um, the analytical content of, of uh, lentils, and I'll we'll show you that in, in a minute. Um, it's filled with essential minerals, which is much easier for the body to utilize. Um, so a good source of protein um, is a, in one cup of uh, mung bean, you can get 3.6 gram of protein. So do we need to eat meat to get protein? No, we no. don't. We can, uh, we, can, we can get a far more bioavailable protein by sprouting than even cooking our, our pulses and lentils. It contains digestive enzymes, as I said. One cup sprouts serve 119% of our daily um, allotment of vitamin C. And 
that little jar was roughly about one cup, wasn't it? So it just gives you an idea um, how much um, you can get from a smaller quantity of um, seeds to sprout. So from the, um, from the, from the web, I was able to um, look at the, the, the analytical content of, um, of uh, lentils. And you can see you get 2% calcium, 14% iron, uh, calcium is good for building, um, building your, maintaining your bones as women get older, the bones um, become more brittle. But also, um, calcium is, tends to be used up if we're, if we're acidic. So calcium is very alkalizing. Um, it's got 14% uh, iron, 15%, sorry, 40% 40, 40 magnesium, magnesium is good for building the blood, 7% phosphorus, um, 13% potassium, 7% 7, 7 sodium. What is sodium a component of? Salt. 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 So there you go, you've got your salt content there. You've got, um, but the salt there is, bio is bioavailable. So there you go, your, your salt intake there is much more, um, sorry, uh, no salt. Very pardon, no salt. Um, yeah, so I didn't see that. No salt, so we don't have to worry about salt, but you still need salt, you still need salt in your diet. Um, zinc, 8%. Zinc. Uh, copper, 14%. Um, again, copper is, is excellent for all the biochemical processes in the body. Magnesium, manganese, and selenium. So that's the content in uh, it just that's the mineral content of raw sprouted um, lentils. Uh, calories, if, you, if you're into counting calories, 4%, but really, you don't, we, on the diet that we're supposed to be consuming, we don't need to count calories. 14% uh, proteins and amino acids is available. And then look at your vitamins. You've got vitamin A, you've got your vitamin A, uh, 1%, vitamin C, 21%. And that's in a couple of sprouted um, uh, lentils. Uh, now, you don't have vitamin D, you don't have vitamin C, you don't have vitamin K, which is why we're supposed to eat a variety of different foods um, every day so that you can get all your, so you can get all your uh, required supplements. All right. So to conclude, to conclude, the transgression of physical law is a transgression of God's law. Our Creator is Jesus Christ. He is the author of our being. He has created the human structure. He is the author of our physical law, as He is the author of the moral law. And the human being is. And the human being who is careless and reckless of the habits and practices that concern his physical and his physical life and health sins against God. Many who profess to love Jesus Christ do not show proper reverence and respect for him who gave his life to save us from eternal death. He is not reverent or respected or recognized. This is shown by the injury done to their own bodies in violation of the laws of their being. So 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10, 3, 1, um, 10, 31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Revelation 14, 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory for him, to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that has made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So we need to worship God in order to glory, um, we need to um, glorify God in our bodies because we will be judged for, for everything that that pertain not to just our physical being, but also to our spiritual being. Um, and then finally, Revelation 14, 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. 
Shall we close? Heavenly Father, it is my prayer that we uh, learn how to look after this temple, Lord, and to understand that whatever we eat and whatever we drink, we have to do it to your glory, Lord, and that all the food that we put into our body is to nourish us, Lord, to glorify your name, to strengthen our minds and our bodies. If we do not have good blood, Lord, we, we cannot discern um, what is to take place in the final days and how to prepare for it. So I pray, Lord, that as we um, now go into eating our foods, Lord, we meditate on these things, and we will um, take back um, what we can do in terms of moving towards a more um, clean diet of eating more fresh and um, fresh fruit and um, fresh vegetables and pulses and so on, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer, and I pray that you will help us to achieve the ultimate, a, prefer, a perfect, perfect mind and a perfect body. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.